of life, it has everything to do with the quality of life. Because when you meet Jesus, Jesus changes the quality of your life. I mean, when I met Jesus, I was broken. I was beat down. I was, I was hating life. I, was, I had no purpose. I had no direction. But when I stepped in a relationship with Jesus, not only did he bring order into my life, but he gave me new purpose. He gave me a new desire. He gave me a new hope. He gave me a new vision for life because Jesus is the life. Write this key thought down. When you meet Jesus, Jesus changes the quality of your life. It, it, it's a God kind of life. Life that is filled with joy. Life that is filled with fulfillment and, and purpose. And this is why in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy your life. And that word life here in this text is the same word zoe. But Jesus says, that's what the enemy wants to do. But I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. Right. That is the Jesus that we worship here today. And you need to get this in your spirit here because it, it can change your worldview. It can change the way you live your life. And the God that we worship here today desires that each of us would walk under his favor, walk out the plans and the purpose that he has for us, walk in fullness and joy. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. No, but he came to, to save the world through him. For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who are life or death or anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Plans to give you a future. Come on, your best life is still out in front of you. I can't go all the way to get in front of you today. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He wants you to walk in freedom. He wants you to walk in healing. He wants you to have a joy and a future. Come on. He wants you to have freedom and fulfillment in this life. He wants you to experience this Zoe kind of life so you can experience his love, his mercy, his kindness, his grace. Come on. I just thank God for you. Praise God. For the love of Jesus has come. Praise the Lord. Praise the experience the Zoe life. What does that mean? It's the, it means the moment I step into relationship with God through his son, Jesus, my life is forever changed. Amen. And when you experience that life, it comes to dwell on the inside of us. We can experience the life of God on the inside of us. Our past is behind us. Amen. Our present is secure in Christ and our future is now filled with purpose vision because of the Zoe life. It's like my life has a different quality to it when I live in step and in relationship with Jesus. It's an upgrade. <laughs> it's an upgrade. I love that. Like there's nothing wrong with an iPhone 10, but if you can get a free upgrade to the 12, <laughs> how many would agree that's an upgrade? <laughs> Especially you Android guys. <laughs> I'm teasing. Like, there's nothing wrong with riding Delta in the back, but if they come up to you and say, hey, you can move up the first class for free, how many would agree that's an upgrade? And Jesus says that I've shown up in this world to give you an upgrade. Everywhere that Jesus went here on earth, he was giving life. He was bringing an upgrade. Come on. When Christ came to this earth, he found our thirst and he quenched it. He found our hunger and he satisfied it. He found our shame and he removed it. He found our trouble and he cured it. He found our loss and he returned it. He found our debt and he paid it. He found our weakness and 
and he strengthened it. He found our emptiness and he filled it. He found our burdens and he lifted it. He found our battle and he won it. He found our souls and he redeemed it. He found our cross and he carried it. He came to give you life. He woke up your life. He shook up your life. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for Jesus because now I once was dead in my sin, but now I got a new life and a new purpose. This Zoe life lives on the inside of me. Come on, man. I just thank God. Jesus is the Logos. Thank you, Lord. He brings order into my life. Bless this man. Bless this man. God is good. He brings order into my life. That is chaos. He brings me water when I am thirsty. Jesus is the life. He makes everything better. Amen. Amen. Number three. Write this down. Jesus is the light. Amen. He's the light. Yes. He's still the light. Amen. I know it's dark outside, but Jesus is still the light. Amen. The text reads this. The life was the light of men. Now check this out. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Amen. Amen. The light was shining in the darkness, and the darkness couldn't even grab it. <clears throat> Jesus is the light. And when he was born, he was born in darkness. Like, in a natural, I mean, Herod, he was tripping. I mean, taxes were going up. Everything seemed dark surrounding him. It was dark politically. It was dark spiritually. I mean, the spiritual leaders of that time, they were being bought by Rome. There were people who loved the law of God but failed to have the love of God in their hearts. And let me just say to you right now, in this dark season that we find ourselves in, may it not be said about us, may we not be so in love with the things of God that we fail to have the heart of God. Amen. Let's stay close to Jesus. Amen. Let's stay close to Jesus. Let's not just focus on him here on Sundays. Let it become a part of our lives so we can take that light and that love to this world around us. Amen. It was dark politically when Jesus was born. It was dark spiritually. It was dark literally. Like when Jesus was born, it was actually dark. Like he shows up in a dark place as the light of the world. And I know that it may seem dark right now in our world, but somebody here today, you feel like you're surrounded by darkness. You, you, you went to the doctors and they gave you a dark report. The environment that you work at is dark and then you go home and your home is dark. But God told me to tell you that Jesus is still the light. Amen. And it doesn't matter how dark it gets, you can't out dark his light. Amen. You can't. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, last year my wife picked up some new shoes for my, my five-year-old son, Judah. We call him Batman. He loves Batman. Everything's Batman. He's got Batman on his wall. He's got Batman stuffed animals and action figures. Everything's Batman. Black, yellow, blue, Batman. Everything's Batman. So I'm home one day and he comes in and he's got these new shoes on. And he's wearing them and he's loving them. I mean, they're, they're Batman shoes. And he was so excited to show me these shoes that he walks in and he's stomping his feet. He's looking at him. He's like, Dad, check out my shoes. <laughs> Look at my shoes. And he's stomping his feet extra hard. Because the bottom of his sneakers, they lit up. And he thought it was the coolest thing. So as he's walking into the house, he's walking extra hard. As he's running through the house, he's running extra hard. Because he wanted me to see his sneakers light up. Now, as his father, of course, I'm hyping it up. Like, I'm like, dude, these are probably the coolest shoes I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I haven't seen shoes like that since the 80s. I had <laughs> shoes like that, but it's been a while, right? I'm like, they are so sweet. And he's like, Dad, thank you. And he's stomping his feet. He says, Dad, I know they look cool right now, but they only look better in the dark. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> he says, Dad, I know they look cool right now. Like they light up right now, 
But you got to see him when it's dark <laughs> because they only look cooler. They only look better in the dark. I don't know if you're tracking with me here or not. So just in case you're not, you see, we get stressed out about the dark. Some of you, you can't sleep at night because it's dark outside. Everything's gone. It's doom and gloom outside. It's hard for you to come in here and worship because it's dark. It's hard for you to hear the leadership of your pastor and come up here and seek God like never before because you're all stressed out because it's dark and I'm telling you I came all the way here to remind somebody here today that Jesus is still the light do not get discouraged when it's dark because you only see Jesus better in the dark 